Hello everyone, I'm Tequila Sunset. It's early in the morning, I got my cup of coffee here, and I thought I'd go someplace, uh, someplace bold. Someplace no one has ever gone before. A DLC speculation video on the Thrones of Decay. Now, for I wanted to focus on the Empire for this one, I'm probably going to do separate videos for each faction. And, uh, starting off with the Empire. So, first I'm going to go to the, uh, patch 4.2 thingy, the content additions for Shadows of Change for a cafe, because in that, uh, blog post or whatever... They laid out a bit like what their uh, what their general template is. So basically, DLC content, Shadows of Change, and Thrones of Decay. Three legendary lords. Uh, you need gameplay mechanics for each lord. Uh, three legendary heroes. Three lords. Three heroes. One per race. Five units per race. Three regiments of renown per race. And one FLC character. And for the uh, Thrones of Decay, it's going to be a legendary lord. So, yeah. Basically, this is the basic template I'm going to be trying to. Honestly, with Empire... They have a huge-ass roster, because they've had several DLCs, right? So, it's no surprise, they've got one of the biggest rosters in the game. They're really, far as I know, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but far as I know, there isn't that much from, like, their army books and stuff like that that they're actually missing. So, if I, so, I probably won't be able to actually pad out, like, this entire thing, like, all the units and regiments of renown in particular, for the, um... For Empire, just because, I don't know, maybe I just don't have enough, like, lore knowledge. So, yeah, any of the uh, big uh, lore masters out there, if you guys want to tell me something that I missed, uh, feel free to in, like, the comments or whatever. Anyway, starting off with our legendary lord, Elspeth Von Draken. She seems to be the one. I'm, I'm pulling up the wikis mostly just so I can have, like, pictures of them for you, just so you can get an idea. Um, so, she is, uh, yeah, Dark Lady of Nuln. So, basically, she is an amethyst uh, wizard, like the, uh, what is it called? The Magisterics or whatever, I guess, that, that, I think that's what they call for, like, woman or whatever, of the Amethyst Order. So she's a really good uh, caster of the lore of death magic. She does, as the picture shows, she does ride a Carmine Dragon. A Carmine Dragon, to my knowledge, is specifically, like, a dragon that's been, like, infused with the lore of death. Like, that kind of magic or whatever. So, um, actually, hold on, let me pull up, where did I find it? Right here. This is like a bit from like um, the, uh, what's it called? The, the Monstrous Arcanum or whatever it's called. Uh, this bit about the um, Carmine Dragon. Okay. This is about its breath attack. The Carmine Dragon's breath weapon is a sorcerer's blast of powerful amethyst magic, capable of withering metal and rendering flesh to dust as if millennia had passed in mere seconds. Okay, so basically, it's like, um, that's their special kind of breath attack. I guess it would, like, Sunder Armor, just as an effect. Kind of like the... Um, where are you? Lizardman, 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 Lizardman. Kind of like the the drop rocks of sundering for these guys. Basically, it does a ton of damage and it sunders armor. So something like that for them, I, uh, for the Carmine Dragon's Breath Attack, seems uh, pertinent. Um, so yeah, so that's really strong for them. And um, I'm trying to think if there's some, there probably maybe some other element of them that has like is emblematic of their um, their being infused with the lore of death magic. I want to say maybe, um, like, one's a magic generation, because for, where are you, for them, they do have, like, life leeching or something like that, maybe, like, while it's in combat, it generates reserves per second, um, I don't think it should be at this rate, like, 0.1 per second, because that's really, really fast, or, um, yeah, something, a balanced amount, maybe 0.05 per second or something like that, while it's in combat, um, so something like that could be interesting, or maybe, like, it can generate reserves if it's in combat with another caster. <coughs> like some like spell casting unit or monster or even like a unit like um where are you Grand Cafe Wujing War Compass I think this technically speaking has like the spell caster trait so anything with the spell caster trait if it's in combat with it then it generates winds of magic I think that could be interesting uh so yeah something like that um could be pretty uh cool with them and so yeah and so yeah she's basically just a powerful caster um rides a dragon so she's good in combat she has her breath attacks and stuff like that uh, she has these, um, like, these, uh, also her uh, items here, like, the uh, Pale Scythe, made of more, uh, made of shadow than substance, the weapon is said to be of Von Dragon's own making, as is attuned to the power of Saish and the purple wind magic, focusing and concentrating it to her will, so probably some, like, winds of magic generation thing, could generate reserves or recharge rates, something to that effect, uh, could be interesting, or maybe, um, it could boost, like, uh, where is it, where are you? It could be something like Teclis's, uh sort of Teclis that boosts Spell Mastery. It could be something similar to that. Um, but either way, uh, something that boosts her magic, basically. Also, Death's Time Cube Hourglass is an ancient and storied artifact, for it is said to contain 
As it's measuring sand, musty remnants of the dead old god of old, and Von Draken has spent months of naturally long life studying its mysteries. With it, she has perfected some limited measure of control over time and death itself. Oh god, that they're gonna make that a heel, isn't it? Hopefully, okay, heel seems like the easy one for this. I hope they do something more interesting with it. They could have it be some kind of, um, what it could be is a kind of specific tech against, like, undead. So, for example, like, if it's, if she's in combat or if she's within the vicinity of a unit, that unit can't replenish models. So, like, um, because, like, for the lore of, um, for the lore of vampires, they have Invocation of the Heck, where are you? Uh... Invocation on Heck, which can resurrect models, um, if, if it heals enough, like, the HP threshold high enough. So, or, like, if all the other models are, like, have already been healed, then it can resurrect models. So, have something where, like, if she's in the vicinity of it, or if she's in combat with, um, with a unit, like, say, some Blood Knights or something like that, they can't re uh, resurrect models. Like, something like that could be interesting. Um, but yeah, I think that would be way more interesting than just giving her a heal. I, I don't know. Like, healing is already too ubiquitous in the current meta, so... Yeah, this that, that sounds like it'd be way more interesting. So, yeah, that's our character. Um, I kind of like her as, like, having a niche of being, like, the expensive and very powerful spellcaster, as opposed to Balthazar Gelt, for example, who's a uh, cheaper um, a cheaper lord. Because, yeah, Gelt is really cool. It's pretty cool. So, the thing with Gelt is, like, you can take him on Quicksilver, uh, Staff of Valance... You can just pair him with, like, Searing Doom, Plague of Rust, keep things simple. Or you can have, like, maybe um, Plague of Rust and uh, Final Transmutation. And you've got a good, really, uh, really cost-effective caster here in matchups where the um, Lord Metal is good for you. So, yeah. He can be, like, the cheap uh, legendary caster, while she can be the um, more expensive option, you know, with their big dragon and whatnot. So, yeah. That could be interesting. Uh, as for legendary heroes, I think they're going to... There's a few people they could do. Like, there's... Um, like, Luther Huss is one of them. There's the, um, what's his name? The, okay, I always mix them up. Mix them up. There's the Ludwig Schwarzheim, Schwarz, Schwarz something, and then the uh, Kurt Helborg. I think Kurt Helborg is the Reichsmarschall, and Schwarzheim is, like, the, um, like, the champion or whatever. He's supposed to be, like, the, like, a great duelist, and the, ex, the, excuse me, supposed to be, like, the exec, executioner, the chief executioner or whatever, but he's also supposed to be a great duelist, a great combatant. So, you could have people like them. Uh, as your legendary lords, like in a vacuum, I would think of them as your legendary hero, as opposed to um, them. There's also Luther Huss. Where is it, Luther Huss? He's like the um, like the, uh, like a legendary like elector count or um, arch elector or whatever or war priest. But considering that this is because it's Thrones of the Cage, so you have Nurgle and Empire, it seems like this might be like a Tamarkan uh, focused. Um, uh, DLC kind of are centered around that story because so like Elspeth von Draken, Tamarkan, they fought against each other. Um, so I think that Theodore Bruckner is going to be the legendary uh, hero. So the thing with him is he's first of all, he's supposed to be massive. Yeah, like even here it says, Giant of a Man, Dower, uh, Ruthless, and Taciturn. Theodore Bruckner uh, towered head and shoulders over even the sturdy folk of Wizenland. So he's supposed to be massive. He's supposed to be a really strong combatant who wields like this big ass greatsword. And um, his uh, his mount. Where is the name for his mount? Yeah, I forget the name. I think it's called Reaper. I think it's called Reaper, but I might be nearly uncontrollable demogriff Reaper. Yeah. So he wields a de he rides a demogriff mount, which is itself supposed to be like a larger um, a, yeah larger example of the kind taken from Nilfgaard. So it's like an uncharacteristically large and fearsome uh, demogriff. So that just seems like a pretty cool like combat character, like a, just a big dude with a big sword riding a big demogriff. That just sounds pretty heavy metal. So yeah, that could be pretty cool. He can basically just be kind of like Henry Le Massif for um for Tony Bertone. So basically something like this, like this guy basically, the same role he is, just being like a really good like a combat uh, combatant. Maybe you can give him Guardian. I don't know if you necessarily need that. Uh, because I don't know, yeah, like I don't know if he's like a bodyguard character. Let me just double check. I don't I'm pretty sure he isn't like a bodyguard. Hold on. What is he supposed to be? Yeah, I don't think he's like actually a bodyguard. Yeah, he's basically, yeah, he's basically just like a really powerful combatant. I think it's totally fine. Um, just focus on making him like a strong duelist, and I think that's totally fine for him. Giving him his demigriff is pretty cool. His items, I remember, he has like a couple weapons. I think. Yeah, Liar's Bane. That's his big ass great sword. Just make it a damage spike thing. That's totally fine. Or you could make it like um something that buffs up his armor piercing damage and his splash attack. 
his splash attack power. So it like makes him better at crowd clearing. That could be pretty cool because it's like a big, huge great sword. He's swinging around, sweeping attacks and whatever. So yeah, that can work. He also has a Storm Lance, which is a bit awkward for a campaign because it's like with Carl Franz because he has the Reichland Rune Fang and the um um why oh wow uh, Gal Mirage. There we go. He's got those two item of weapons, so he can't he can only equip one at once in campaign and at time in campaign. So I guess like you can just pick and choose. But in multiplayer, uh, he can just take he can just take both. It's totally fine. You know, he's got the man's got two hands. Okay, so um. So yeah, uh, just basically, what does this do? It's um, a bladed tip crafted from Meteoric Iron Graven with the runes and the heavens. Lance strikes its target like a bolt of lightning, both burning and blasting them. So something uh, like an active ability that gives them like fire and magic damage. And um, I don't know, maybe some like uh, anti-large or something like that. Or it can be like a passive item that passively gives like him uh, fire and magic damage and like bonus versus large or something like that. Some kind of um, um, something. It could also be, since it's a lance... It could be something that focuses on uh, charge bonus, like with, um, where is my man, my man Imric. So yeah, with the Star Lance, this focuses on charge bonus, so something that, uh, to that effect, like fire and magic damage, and an emphasis on doing, like, really strong impact damage on the charge, that could be, um, its use case. So, like, yeah, like the, um, the, where are you? So the Storm Lance, this is more about focus, if you want him to just be really high impact on a charge, like especially charging a single entity. And this Liar's Bane, his great sword, can be focused on just like an like an infantry, just grinding down like crowd, uh, crowds of like infantry or even cavalry. So yeah, so the, you can have two different um, um, like roles for his two different weapons. And so you can pick and choose depending on what you want to specialize them into. Also the Baleflame Amulet. Okay, so to my knowledge, the way this thing worked was like when the um, when Tamrican tried to like possess or whatever, um, uh, possess uh, Theodore Buckner, um, it basically just like exploded and killed the shit out of him. Um, both him, Buckner and the uh, Tamrican. So I guess you can have it be something where, um, I guess when Buckner dies, this is kind of a weird item. But it's like, yeah, if your lord dies, then he can do something. But um. You can basically give it so, like, when he dies, there's a big-ass explosion around him. Does fire and magic damage. Shit ton of damage. It has to be a ton of damage. Because that's not really something, like, you have control over. But, yeah, if it does a ton, like, a high enough amount of damage, that could be uh, interesting. Um, so, yeah, I guess something like that. I can't really think of anything else that would do. That does seem kind of weird. It's like, you have an item that's supposed to be, like, special or whatever, but it's only use cases if your guy fucking dies. But, um, so yeah, I can't think of anything else for it, based on what this is. Unless I'm completely, like, maybe somebody can have some ideas. But, uh, yeah, that's what I got. So, yeah, um, there you go. There's, uh, there's your legendary hero. Um, so, as your general, because, yeah, going back to this template, you get a lord and a hero, one per race. Uh, just generics. So, yeah, the, the easy answer is just a generic uh, wizard lord. Um, to my knowledge, in tabletop, I think these guys, they had access to, um... All of the like the eight base lords, so basically, um, basically all the ones that these guys have plus metal. Um, so yeah, just basically that. Just make them a generic caster. My chief concern with them is that they might make uh, Balthazar, Balthazar get a bit redundant if they're cost effective enough. So I don't know. Maybe they just have it so that they're not as good, or maybe just give Gelt greater arcane conduit, so that way he just that just like. Makes him just even more of a step above, just like a generic caster lord. So that could, that could be um something like, like if you just do that. Actually, I think it's fine. That should be better. So yeah, uh, basically um the where are you? So yeah, generic caster lords. These guys pretty simple. Generic caster lords. Just give them like um a Pegasus, like a like on foot, on horseback, and on Pegasus. Although I'm pretty sure in tabletop, like if you had um if you take like um. A light caster, the the caster lord. I think you sh they should have a uh, luminarch mounts. That would be pretty cool. And if you take a celestial one, they should have the uh, celestial hurricane, the heavens casters, and uh, also the of course the amber ones, like the um, like the beast caster. They should get a griffin mount. Although hopefully a better one, because this guy's griffin is just dog shit. Because um, yeah, only forty seven hundred HP and fifty five leadership and fifty armor. This guy is so squishy. Thirty melee defense too. It's just, yeah, there's a reason why you pretty much never see this guy in multiplayer. He's just way too easy to kill. So, yeah. Um, yeah, there you go. So, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty good for the, um, just the regular generic, uh, wizard lords. 
Yeah, that would be really cool. That would open them up a lot, just like letting them take the caster and not have that, and without being limited to metal magic, that would be nice. Uh, as for our hero, I'd say just an engineer. Um, they already have a, with the Empire Captain, they already have a, um, a melee to focus guy. They have a support guy with the Warrior Priest, or a me like a me like melee focus support guy, because this stuff is like melee attack, ward save, stuff like that. Uh, and also the bombardment around him. Although this, I think, needs a buff, because right now it just doesn't do nearly enough damage. But yeah, otherwise, this guy, uh, they already have, the, like, like, a melee support guy uh, covered. So, um, give them the engineer and just have him be, like, a similar template to the dwarf engineers, basically. Uh, he buffs your range. He has a rifle or something like that for himself. And, um, yeah. Oh, most importantly, uh, give him a steam tank mount. I don't, I don't, there's no, in my opinion, there's no reason to bring him in onto the Empire if you don't give him a steam tank mount. Just do it. It's great. Just do it. Don't bother with a war wagon mount. War wagons are fucking dumb. Um... Or they're not dumb, it's just they're annoying. In multiplayer, they're annoying. Even in campaign, I didn't really find these guys that fun. They're just like, whatever. Um, but yeah, give them a Sting Tank mount. There you go. Boom. Easy money. Um, so that's our hero. Now, on to our units. Now, this is the part where I really am, like, kind of... Like, I know, like, there's a couple here. Like, you can just see it up here. But, like, for our wars and some other, like, stuff. Because their roster is so filled out. Um, it really just, to my knowledge, there just doesn't seem that much. But yeah, um, going into the first one, Null and Ironsides, this seems like the easiest choice. Um, it's going to be, it's, it seems like it's going to be a Null uh, focused DLC. So yeah, just basically these guys are um, like handgun, going to be like handgunners just with armor. More expensive, more armor, uh, probably something around greatsword areas. Because, um, you know, they are called Ironsides. Or maybe like 80, somewhere between 80 armor and 95 armor probably. And yeah, handgunner, damage output, just more armor, maybe like a bit more melee defense or something. Something like that, or just like a bit more leadership. Something to that effect, but yeah. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to be like 800, like at least 800 points uh, per uh, unit. So yeah, just a um, pretty straightforward unit. Just good uh, armor-piercing DPS, decently armored itself, so it's not like countered by like bowfire or something like that. So yeah, uh, solid. Um... Then the Celestial Hurricane. So yeah, this is like the big centerpiece that pretty much everybody's expecting. Um, basically, I imagine as being similar to the Luminarch in the sense that it's going to be same size, similar HP pools, uh, like relative, like mediocre armor. So pretty easy. To, it's pretty easy to kill. So to compensate for that, now to my knowledge, what this thing gave you in the tabletop was basically like a support aura that buffed like their chance to hit your unit's chance to hit the units close by you chance to hit and then there was also this thing where um it gave you like a um what's it called you put down like a marker or something like that on a specific aoe and like they were you would roll a die i think it was up to six and there were six different um like effects or i think five different effects that would come in one of them was like an ice like a like a hail storm thingy that's actually kind of like the um where are you uh kiss lift kiss lift kiss lift it was kind of like the hailstorm thing for Lord Tempest, basically. Just a bombardment of big shards of ice. So, like, there's that one. I know there's definitely a uh, lightning bolt one that's basically like a bound urine and thunderbolt. And then there's, of course, the comet. That's basically a bound comet of Cassandora. Um, so, basically that. And there's one other I'm missing. I think there was some kind of, like, whirlwind kind of thing or tornado or something like that. So, basically, it would just be... I'm imagining it. As, um, here, let me see if I can pull it up, pull up the, um, the page about them in the army book. Okay, so here it is. So, one thing they had, first of all, was the Locus of Azir, which basically, if you have one or more Hurricanums on the battlefield at the start of your magic phase, add one dice to your power. Okay, so basically, it's going to be like, um, where are you wishing work up? It's basically like the, um, Nexus of Elemental Wind. Just increase power recharge rate. Yeah, plus 20%. It's pretty straightforward. That's nice. Um, so give them that. And the other one, uh, Portents of Battle of the Hurricane, and all friendly units will have, within six inches, have a plus one bonus to hit. Yeah, so that's a melee attack buff. Just give it, like, some, like, like, 55 meter AoE. Basically, like, uh, where are you? Have it basically just be, um, hold on a second. Let me read the lore thing from it, just so I can get, uh, refresh my memory on this one. So, yeah, I think this actually does really convey what it, uh, what it will bring to the table. So, in desperate times of need, when the signs and portents indicate the fate of the Emperor, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they'll bring it out. Uh, these battle altars were originally built to help the celestial uh, wizards in their studies of the heavens. And at the heart of each Hurricanum lies one of the college's most revered artifacts, one of Teclis's orbs of sorcery, which enables the Hurricanum to do more than just observe the orbits of passing comets. They actually alter their paths and even cause some of them to come crashing down to from the heavens. 
Mounted upon sturdy carriages and attended by the Order of Acolytes, the Hurricanums have since been turned into devastating weapons of war. So they harness the Wind of Azir, in battle the sorcerer's energy, surrounding a grown strength from a steady breeze to a whirling hurricane. So that's the ways of magic regeneration. By adjusting the huge or orrery atop the altar, the Acolytes can summon the very wrath of the heavens. Lightning bolts smite the Empire's foes. Icy hail shards uh, flesh, uh, flens flesh from bone. More impressive still are the rare times when the Acolytes achieve a perfect alignment and fiery comets come streaking out of the skies. So yeah, there's your lightning, your hailstorm bombardments, and your um, your comet. Uh, so yeah, basically just like bound urine and thunderbolts, bound comet of Cassandora, and in my opinion, I think it's totally fine. You should give them the bound, um, basically a bound, what is it called again? Hailstorm. Bound hailstorm. Just give them that. And uh, what was the last one? And the Empire soldiers who march beside them often report seeing visions of the imminent future. They are able to predict the actions of the foe with uncanny accuracy and know exactly where and when to strike the critical blow. So there, in my opinion, that just to me says, just give them, uh, where are you? Give them tactician, except instead of melee defense, have them be melee attack. Something like that. You can maybe, um, and instead of reload skill, you can give them like accuracy. And to my knowledge, like five accuracy isn't as impactful as five reload skills, so you can just increase the number. Um, but yeah, like five to eight, plus five or eight melee defense, a uh, melee attack, excuse me, and um, like plus ten, plus fifteen accuracy. Or actually, okay, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe they understand how accuracy works better than I do. But like plus fifteen or twenty accuracy would probably be more um, appropriate uh, as far as being similar impact to plus five reload skill. So yeah, like plus five or eight melee attack and plus fifteen twenty accuracy in an AOE. Um, that could be pretty solid in making him a support character for both your front lines and your back lines. And of course, um, I think he should it should be available as a mount for the uh, Celestial Wizard Lords. Not not necessarily the heroes, but like the lords, so that the lords feel a bit more special. Um, so yeah, that would be uh, pretty cool. That's your Celestial Hurricane. Yeah, I do think it definitely should be uh, a lot more expensive. Uh, this would be like similar cost probably than the Luminarch as well. Or maybe cheaper because it doesn't have like the actual like steady damage of that. It's just as like bound spells and stuff like that. But um, yeah, still pretty cool in my opinion. Um, moving on to the next one, the Knights of the White Wolf. So basically, these guys are de devoted, to, like zealously devoted to the um, uh, Ulrich, the God Ulrich, uh, the Wolf God or God of Wolves. Yeah, God of Wolves in winter. So basically, these guys, the special thing about them compared to most other knights is, as you can see in the picture here, they wield these, like, big-ass war hammers. So the way I imagine them, instead of lances, so the way I imagine them is just basically, like, um, like, instead of having, like, they'll have lower charge bonus than most knights, because they're not a shock cavalry, but they'll have higher melee attack and melee defense, and their weapon strength will be, like, majority armor piercing. So, yeah, just something like that. Also give them frenzy, because they're supposed to be, like, extremely zealous, like, um... Uh, Extremely zealous, extremely ferocious fighters. So kind of like the where are you? Like flagellants have frenzy. Same reasoning. Uh, give them frenzy. So yeah, just they're way better in like an attritional grind with like army armored, uh, like heavily other heavily armored cavalry and stuff, uh, stuff of that nature. So um, yeah, there you go. There's your uh, knights of Ulrich, and I also brought up here. So those are like the three just like regular units that I at least I can think of. There's probably some other stuff out there that you could give them, but to my knowledge, um, not really stuff like in the army book or whatever, unless people, um, somebody can correct me. So the next one are going to be these two token guard. Basically, these are an elite unit within the Knights of the White Wolf. I think of these guys as being like a um, an ROR, actually, like the, the one ROR at least I could think of. Um, so yeah, personal bodyguard of the High Priest of Ulrich. So basically, they can have guardian. They can be kind of like... Like, if you look at their minis, this is um, from 6th edition. If you look at their minis, they're basically like human hammerers. Like the dwarven hammerers. Where are you guys? Uh, here you go. Basically like dwarven hammerers. I would think there'd be something similar to them. Probably not as elite because dwar they're humans instead of dwarves. But yeah, an ROR that basically just um, has guardian, uh, really strong dam armor piercing damage. Uh, probably general stats is fine. And like immune to psychology or something like that. Um, and also Frenzy, again, just like the uh, regular um, um, White Knights of Ulrich, or Knights of uh, Ulrich. So yeah, I think that can be, um, yeah, I think that can be pretty good. So that's the stuff I can think of. There was other stuff, like the other Knightly Orders, like the Knight's Panther and stuff like that, but honestly, they didn't seem that, like, unique from an actual battle perspective. I get in the lore, they're supposed to be descended from the um, the Orders that uh, fought in Araby, like in the Crusades or whatever. That's why they have, like, the Panther skins and whatever. Um... Or like the leopard skins and stuff. 
the exotic animals in general. But um, they just like they, they're just like lance and shield knights, which we already have like in abundance. You got empire knights, blazing sun, rex guard. Like it's it's all there. So I don't know. They just didn't seem that interesting, interesting enough to really like for me to dedicate for like a video. But yeah, I don't know. Um, other than that, like another thing I would like to see them add for the game. First of all, I did talk about mounts. Also, with um Theodore Bruckner getting a demigriff mount, I think stuff like empire ca uh, ca captains and generals in the empire. I think it would be pretty sick if they got demigriff mounts themselves. Not as powerful as uh, Bruckner's mount uh, because it's supposed to be like a uniquely like big and ferocious demigriff. But yeah, still uh, making them like a mobile armor piercing damage uh, character would be pretty nice, especially because like. Especially in multiplayer, these guys are pretty much never taken. It's very rare. Especially the regular general of the Empire. Like, this guy. They are, like him, he is so outshone by the uh, generic um, melee ca uh, combatant for the uh, Grand Cathay. This guy is just so much better. It's unbelievable. It's not even close. Um, so, yeah. Um, basically, just, like, that would be a way of making him interesting. Because that way, he can be, like, a cheaper... Like, you can have it be, like, the same cost as an Imperial Pegasus. Because even though it's less mobile, it's also going to have, like, more health and... Um, Probably more armor and also more um, like armor piercing damage and stuff like that. So yeah, just pair that. Like you can just have them be like a super cheap character, like a cheap combatant or something like that. So yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Or maybe like 450 or yeah, probably like 500 something like that. Actually, how much is? I forgot how much. Just for um, like three or four hundred basically have it in the vein like a slightly better horned one mount. So yeah, there you go. So yeah. Um, that's one thing. Also, what else was it? Yeah, I do think these are just some general changes. I think almost like balance changes. Uh, so granted, Soul Fire Bombardment and the regular Soul Fire, Bomb Soul Fire Bombardment are really underwhelming since the switch to Game 3. So I think it would be nice if you provided some of that. Um, Benediction, I think also if you had it can provide uh, immune to psychology. Or at least for the Lords. Like for Volkmar and the um, Arch Lector. If you had Benediction, give them like, um, I don't know. Grand Benediction or something like that. Have it give immune to psychology as well. That could actually be um, interesting. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, otherwise, I think most of the stuff is fine. And uh, there was another thing. I do think War Wagons could use, could use a nerf. Like, nerf their speed. Because they're just too good right now. In the current meta. Oh, also, I forgot, almost forgot. Um, land ships. I know a lot of people have been talking about land ships. Honest to God, they just... I can't get excited for something like that. It basically just sounds like it's just going to be a steam tank, but worse. So it's like, what's the point? Like, I have a steam tank. Like, okay. So yeah, also another... Oh, one other thing. So, like, with the way Chaos, like, marks work, I think it'd be totally fine if you also gave that to, like, a lot of these just general units with the... So that you can bring, like, the Elector Count units in there. Like, something like... If you want to give Empire Knights a mark of, like, Everlasting Light, so that the way they become these guys for an extra... What is that? Uh... 150 gold um i think that'd be totally fine um for most uh, most of these stuff aren't like too overpowered to the point where making them as a marked unit would be too expensive so yeah i think that'd be pretty cool um i think i've seen a couple other people bring this up i know human boy uh put out a video recently um so that's uh that he said some basically this exact thing so but yeah i think it's a good idea i think um yeah putting that like the like the halberds these guys have Rowdy, so that is perfect vigor, which is nice. And an expert charge defense. I think CA just forgot to actually change that because they used to be charge defense for the large. Or maybe they specifically wanted them to keep it. Either way, I think for 700 gold, I think they're fine. So if you want to mark up these uh, halberdiers into Nordland's Mariners, totally fine. Um, although Aquatic might make them a bit overpowered. Who knows? Um, same thing with... Um, where are the, the Hawkland ones? Yeah, maybe you can give these for the handgunners, so that way they're just, it gives them stock and vanguard. Vanguard's not really super pertinent, it's fine, but like stock in particular and the increased range would be nice. Yeah, stuff like that. Uh, mortars aren't even that strong, so suits and, suits and, suit, suit sun's guns, yeah, would be perfectly fine. Uh, same thing, stubborn bulls, I like them. Knights of Moor are actually kind of dog shit, but um, for 1100 gold, like just, that's pretty expensive, just fear and terror. Because Grim Resolve, it gives immune to psychology and an AoE. The thing is, like, Usually for cavalry, like, a lot of times you're going to be out on the flanks and stuff like that. So, the stuff that you want to have immune to Kai psychology probably isn't going to be getting it. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, it just, it also just seems boring for what the Knights of Moor are. Like, the Knights of Moor, this is the God of the Dead, right? So, yeah, God of the Dead's Chosen Knights. Yeah, in my opinion, it would be way cooler if, like, instead of Grim Resolve, you had something that was thematic for, like, as, like, an anti-undead tech. 
Something like that. That would be way cooler if they reworked that. And then also, yeah, that could be a fun mark. Karasberg's Great Swords. Um, Unbreakable is really, really strong. Bathe in Blood is also very good. But for 1100 cost, that is expensive. It is unshielded. It is slow. So, yeah, I think that's... Um, yeah, I think it'd be fine as well. Emperor's Wrath, yeah, for 2300 cost, this is definitely fine. It's basically... Yeah, it's slightly more damage on the um, shots. They also have the burnt thingy. Leadership debuff and the emergency event. Also, leadership debuff and a little bit of damage... Uh, to just uh, provide some uh, um, disruption of the formations. Perfect Vigor. This guy's Perfect Vigor. Otherwise, yeah. Also, Kaboom. That's pretty funny. Uh, so, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, this guy's totally fine for um, 2,300 gold. Yeah, he also looks awesome. Like that, that blue and gold and red skin. Uh, just so cool. So, yeah. Give um, so, yeah, bring this. Let me let me upgrade my Steam Tanks into this. Um, it's probably not even going to be that good. in uh, Like, at least in multiplayer. But in uh, still fun thematic. People like fun and thematic. Yeah, Swords of Ulrich, totally fine. Uh, they got Frenzy, cause fear. Um, oh, for the Knights of the White Wolf, they should also cause fear. That's fine. Totally fine. Knights of the White Wolf, or at the very least a two-token guard, have them cause fear. Um, at, le at least a two-token guard, but also Knights of the White Wolf, if they cause fear, that's totally fine too. I think that makes sense. Especially because like they have like, that um, battle cry or whatever, I can't remember exactly what it's called. That battle cry element to them, so that can be like their battle cry instills fear into lesser beings or whatever you want. So yeah, I think that's fine. Um, yeah, so yeah, these guys would be cool if you can upgrade your swords into them. Stir River Patrol, uh, their big thing is suppressed, right? Yeah, suppressed. Okay, that one's actually really strong. For 675, fire damage, so you're mitigating healing and suppressed. Vanguard deployments, whatever, but suppressed on them. You are paying an extra 200 points. I think this is fine, especially because these guys are so easy to kill. So yeah, this guy's fine too. Um, same thing with Noble Sons. These guys, they're like better uh, combat sets, right? Yeah, their big thing is better combat sets, better armor, better damage as well. Yeah, 700 gold, that's a cool unit. I take them. So yeah, these, yeah, these guys are really cool. Yeah, just letting people take these in multiplayer with like the marks or whatever, so they have to pay the premium or whatever. Yeah, go ahead, go for it. So yeah, that'd be fun. So yeah, that's uh, those are my thoughts on the um, on the Empire uh, and the Thrones of Decay DLC. I think it's supposed to come out in April. Um, yeah, it might it might get pushed back to May. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, hopefully you guys found that interesting. I am gonna come out with a video specifically about uh, Nurgle and the Dwarves as well. Those should be pretty fun. Uh, I do really like these speculation videos. Um, they are pretty popular. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later, and, uh, take care. Uh, if you found the video interesting, sorry, I forget to, like, chill my shit, uh, at the end of these videos. So, if you did find this interesting, please do consider leaving a like on the video, uh, or subscribing to the channel. It's very, very helpful, and very greatly appreciated. Otherwise, I will see you guys later, and take care.